Hey guys, how are you going? My name's Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at setting up your very own RetroPie system with our gaming kit for RetroPie. Now, if you ever want to get back to the vintage days of gaming, maybe multiplayer, uh, Mario Kart or 007 on the Nintendo 64, or just something like Mario Brothers, then RetroPie is awesome. So what is RetroPie? Well, it's an operating system that's designed to run on the Raspberry Pi, and it has a whole bunch of different emulators on it. Now, emulators are bits of code that are designed to emulate um, vintage gaming consoles or platforms. So you might have a Nintendo 64 emulator or a Sega emulator or a PlayStation emulator, different things. And then virtual games called ROMs can be loaded onto those emulators and you can play them just like the originals, which is pretty cool, except with RetroPie, you get access to heaps and heaps of different emulators and you can play whatever you want without having to change physical consoles, which is really cool. And the Raspberry Pi board is about that big. You get all of that in that size, which is really, really cool. So that's RetroPie. Now, if you're interested a bit more about the hardware setup side of things, check out our How to Build a RetroPie console tutorial. But today, we're gonna to be taking a look at setting it up for the very first time with software, configuring your controller, and how we can put ROMs on there, which is really, really cool. So today I'm using my uh, my Piecade console here. Well, our Piecade console, it's kind of an office Piecade, but it's really, really cool. If you haven't taken a look at it yet, I really encourage you to. It's vintage gaming arcade console with joystick, buttons, display, mounting for a Raspberry Pi, it's rad. Uh, we love it, but I'm gonna be using that for today, but you can use any uh, Raspberry Pi you've got lying around with the power supply. Uh, the most important thing is a RetroPie SD card. Now, in your gaming kit, you'll also get some controllers. Now, you can either get NES-style controllers, uh, SNES-style controllers like I've got here, or you can also get wireless 8-bit to Bluetooth controllers in both styles, as well as the just-landed Nintendo 64 ones. Uh, they're really, really cool. So check those out. But first of all, let's get everything set up and then we're gonna plug in power. So let's plug power into this guy. And make sure you've already got the SD card and HDMI cable connected up. Where's that display? There we go. Now, it's gonna take a few minutes to boot up. A few moments, sorry, I should say, not minutes. Uh, and after it's done that, we're gonna be uh, confronted with a controller config setup screen for the first time. If you've already gone through that screen, it won't appear again, but the first time you boot it up, it'll appear with this config screen. It allows us to uh, map buttons on our controller or keyboard or USB device to the to the controls to navigate the RetroPie system, and then those get mapped to the emulators for the various controls for them, which is cool. Now, what I always recommend is take a keyboard, uh, can be just needs a USB dongle, anything like that, USB keyboard, wired keyboard, whatever, uh, and map your controls with that first, because if you use a gaming controller, say, and you accidentally get those mixed up, because you, you get two, uh, the other one isn't gonna be mapped by default, and then you're not gonna have anything to map it uh, after that, so take a keyboard and map that first, which is really cool. So we've got here the um, the welcome screen. Now hold a button on your uh, on your gamepad. So I'm going to hold the button on the keyboard, and it will come up with keyboard. Cool, cool. Now here's where you want to be a little bit careful because whilst you can remap things, say you rush through and you accidentally map start as any random key. When you go to hit the start menu to configure another controller, it's not gonna work and you're gonna have to um, you know, take a while to find out which one is the start key. So just take your time with this first one so you've got a really good guaranteed uh, gamepad setup. So up and down, left and right, we're just gonna use the arrow keys. Let's press them, now map, start, we'll go enter, select, escape. And I'm just gonna map these as A, B, X, Y give it some shoulders. Now, there's gonna be a lot of controls here that you might not be able to map depending on your gamepad, and that's because it's designed to work with a huge variety of different gamepads, um, from you know, your classic SNES or even a simpler NES style controller to your confusing Trident style Nintendo 64 controller, Xbox 360 controller, whatever it is with, you know, with analog joysticks and a, a D-pad, it's designed to account for all those. So if you wanna skip past something, so left trigger, we don't really have any triggers, so let's just hold a button and it will skip past it. Now use a button you've already defined or configured because it won't let you redefine something. So it's not gonna accidentally configure it if you, you know, let it go and don't hold it in for long enough. Keep going down, 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 down. And you'll get to the end eventually. Good, good. Now press A and after a moment it will say, yep, cool. And we go into RetroPie, fantastic. It's a little bit bland. There's nothing on here. There's no games, there's no emulators. And that's because it'll only display emulators when it detects that there is an available ROM for it. Cool. So we'll get to ROMs in a second, but first of all, we're gonna configure our gamepad because playing with USBs, 
kind of fun, but that's not what we want. We want a vintage gaming experience. So take this guy and plug it into a USB port. Oh, close that back up. All right, into a USB port. And now set that there. You can hear start, go down to configure input, hit A. Now we can configure another device. So I'll hold on here, USB gamepad. Fantastic, up, down, left. Left, right, oops, so I have stuffed this up and I've accidentally configured something twice, which is not what you want. So I'm going to skip all the way through. So that's a good example of being really careful. If that was with the USB keyboard uh, straight up, would have had all kinds of issues. I wouldn't have had anything configured. So I'm just gonna hold down buttons that have already been um, defined. And it's a bit of an ordeal because it doesn't have auto skip. You have to go through and press it again for each setting, which is a bit of a pain. But when you actually do it properly, it works pretty well. All right. Go past the analog stick selection. Get to there, press A. And it's mapped that, but it didn't really do a good job. We didn't do a good job. So we're gonna map that again. Configure input, and we can remap it by holding a button down again. All right, now we wanna press up, down, left, right. So I had accidentally sort of mashed those two buttons in without being careful, and it just, yeah, configured it again. We'd skip past it, it's all in channels. Start, select, uh, what have we got? A, B, X, Y left shoulder, right shoulder. And that's all we have on our SNES style gaming pad. So we'll skip through these and now this is gonna be configured correctly, which is really cool, really, really cool. Now today, we're gonna to load up uh, Super Mario Brothers. Now, we'll get to loading up ROMs up, uh, you know, in just a moment, but there's a bit of a gray area here where it's up to you to decide how you want to interpret um, copyright infringement. But at Core Electronics, we like to do everything um, you know, as best as we can. So we've purchased the physical uh, game hardware for any game that we load up onto our RetroPie console. So you only see us using these ROMs. Um, but that part's up to you. We're not gonna show you where to find uh, ROMs, but a quick Google search will give you a hand. But now that we've got that set up, let's take a look at loading these uh, these ROMs up. And we can go into the RetroPie settings menu if you wanna configure Bluetooth and audio and Wi-Fi settings. Don't really need to do that to get set up straight out of the box, but for setting up 8-bit Duke, Bluetooth controllers and more advanced stuff, uh, you will need to go into that. But for now, what you're going to need is a USB. One by USB drive. Now, why we're doing this is we're actually going to use the USB and the USB ports on the Pi Cade, or sorry, your Raspberry Pi, I should say. Uh, and we load the ROM up onto it, create a folder, and then insert it. And it actually copies uh, that ROM over onto the SD card. So you don't have to have everything on a USB, you just use that to transfer it over. But you can keep the library on your USB uh, so that if you wanna set up another RetroPie console, then you can just pop the USB in and away you go. But let's take a look. So, first of all, you're going to want to open up your file browser, it works for Windows and Mac. Uh, go to your USB port. There's no issue with it. All right, now, in the top level of the USB, the top directory, create a new folder. I'm going to call it RetroPie, one word, no capitals. Cool, RetroPie. Now, we're gonna unplug our USB, there's nothing in it, that's cool. Now we plug it into our Raspberry Pi, one of the USB ports, just unplug that keyboard for a moment. And what this does is it recognizes that there's a folder in the top level of the directory uh, called RetroPipe. And it will take that and it will create a whole bunch of nested structures inside that folder that we can then put our ROMs into, which is cool. And when it detects a ROM in there, it will automatically copy it over to the SD card. So you can take it out, it only takes a few seconds because it's just creating empty folders. And if you don't believe me, let's take a look at what our RetroPipe file contains now. RetroPie. So we've got BIOS, configs, and ROMs. So we want to click on ROMs, and it has all these folders for the different emulators that we can run. Now, it's important to note that whilst, uh, let's take a look here, Nintendo 64. I love the 64, so don't mind if I keep going on about it. But the 64, there's not just one emulator uh, for the Nintendo 64. You've got uh, Rice, Glide, the Default Moopin. You've got all these different emulators which run slightly better on different games. So you can play around with that, but that's for another time. Optimizing RetroPie, take a look at it, but for now, We've got our file structure. So go to where you've got your ROM, 
So here we go. Now I'm going to copy Super Mario Bros. Uh, RetroPie, ROMs. Now it's a NES game, so I'm going to copy it into the NES folder. Copy it over. It's a very small file. Um, and away we go. Unplug your USB. Uh, now, bear in mind, we're only going to need to plug it into the RetroPie system for a few moments, but if you have a lot of games, you're going to have to leave it for a lot longer because there's obviously more content to transfer over. So plug it in, leave it to transfer, it'll give, give it a few seconds, uh, and it'll do its thing, which is really, really cool. Uh, you don't have to reboot, although you can if you like, but now we should be able to unplug it. All right, now that the activity light has stopped, we're going to go to our system. Now here's where we need to reboot. Quit, we're gonna go restart system. There we go, now you can see what I'm actually doing. Restart system. And give it a few moments, and it's gonna reboot, and when it does, it's going to come back with uh, with the, the ROMs on there, and it's gonna display the NES system. Now, I've actually been caught out before by plugging it in, thinking, yeah, fantastic, unplug it, and there's nothing in there. That generally just means you need to plug it back in and give it another go, either you didn't leave it for long enough, um, or whatnot, but it's no harm done at all. So we'll go through the RetroPie boot up and then we can play some Super Mario Brothers. Fantastic. Cool, cool beans. Leave that guy there. So that's really all there is to copying ROMs over. Now, as I said, the ROM's not gone from the USB. It only copies it, not cut it. Um, so you can keep a, keep a USB, keep that folder and have build up your ROM library as you go and then just pop it into a new RetroPie system and away you go. Now, so you can see here, for example, we actually haven't got the um, the Nintendo Entertainment System there. Uh, perhaps I didn't leave it in for long enough, something else, but a surefire way, I'll show you here, is to pop it in. Now, go down and hit restart again. Uh, restart system, yes. Now, I've had it work uh, both ways, sometimes it, it, it does, sometimes it doesn't, might already be halfway through something. But if you put it in, give it a few moments and then restart the system, it'll boot up and it should have that ROM there. Give it its due time. With the beauty that is post-production, we've cut out that uh, intro sequence. All right, so it hasn't copied over again. So let's take a look at what's going on. First of all, let's make sure that we've got it in the right spot. All right, so go to your computer, plug it back in again. And we can take a look at why that hasn't copied over. It's a good lesson in troubleshooting. All right, USB drive, RetroPie, ROMs. We put it in the right folder. NES, Super Mario Brothers. Yep, yeah, so it's definitely there. So let's um, actually just going to plug that in and leave it for uh, leave it for a good few seconds, and we'll wait for it to transfer then. Alrighty, and we are back. So leaving it in for that few seconds longer did the trick, and we have got it. So you'll see now the options are for RetroPie, which is our settings menu, audio, Bluetooth, etc. Uh, and we have Nintendo Entertainment System because it has detected a valid ROM for that. Now, bear in mind, it's not going to copy duplicates over. So if I insert the USB again uh, and take it out uh, with extra games on there, it's not going to co keep copying it. Just uh, looks to see if there's already a, a game matching that title. If not, uh, then it copies it over. And if there is, it doesn't bother. So let's... Uh, go in. That's all there is to copying ROMs over. A couple of false starts, mostly my fault. Just leave it in there for a good uh, you know, good 30 seconds or so. Restart it and away you go. Now let's take a look. I used to be really good at this game and I get the feeling that I'm now terrible. Well, only let me play one player because there's only one controller detected at the moment. And away we go. Straight up. Just straight up dead. But it's really cool. That's how you can set up your own RetroPie console. I love it, it's really, really awesome. So I hope this encourages you guys uh, with how you can set up a RetroPie gaming system with your gaming kit for RetroPie. I'm Sam, that's all for now guys. I'll see you next time.